For your inner game video this month, I want to talk about a very common sort of thought or practice in, in self-help in general, and that's the idea of what's called the law of attraction. And to kind of paraphrase what that is, this is the idea that if you want something to happen in the real world, what you need to do is just sort of like want it badly enough and focus on it. And by doing that, it will sort of manifest you. And there's this idea that like the universe kind of like is responsive to your wishes and um, by, by, by thinking certain things and focusing on them, you, you bring them to yourself. And now um, I'm gonna look at this from a variety of, of angles. First is the angle of physics. And I know there's like quantum physics and stuff like that and people sort of like in a pseudoscience way say this is quantum physics, action at a distance, whatever. Um, I'll just say I've yet to see any physics paper that supports this. Let's, let's just leave it at that for there. So on a factual, tangible level, I'm, um, I think your evidence is dubious at best. However, to be fair, a lot of people do improve their lives through adopting this idea of like law of attraction, that sort of thing. And <clears throat> I think the reason for that is a concept that should be familiar in RSD, which is the concept of what we call RAS, reticular activation system, which means when you focus on something, you become aware of it. It's kind of the phenomenon where um, if you buy a particular type of car, you start to notice everybody else who has that same car on the road. Before you bought the car, you didn't really notice it. Now everybody seems to be driving it. And that's because you've changed your focus. And that kind of is a bit of the beauty of the law of attraction as practiced, right? Which is if you are focused on something, focus on a particular business and an opportunity for that business just like smashes you in the face, you are more likely to notice it. You're more likely to um, take advantage of it and go with it <clears throat> because you've been kind of primed for it. Psychologically, you're, you're focused on that particular thing. Um, so I think that is powerful too. Where I think this is dangerous is twofold. <clears throat> One is in order for any of that manifestation to actually happen, you're gonna have to take action in the real world. And so anybody who's sitting around thinking like, I want a mansion, I want a mansion, I want a mansion, I want a mansion, that's not gonna get you a fucking mansion. Now that said, if it gets you to investing in real estate so that you eventually will buy that mansion, fine. If that gets you to starting a business to make money so that you'll get that mansion, Fine, that's wonderful. That gets you moving to a country where there's more affluence and more opportunity so you can start all this stuff, fine. So if it, it leads to a tangible action, totally all good. But the like mental masturbation that just sitting around thinking about it is gonna do something for you is very, very harmful, okay? So awareness is one thing, but action is another. And in, in anything that I've personally ever achieved or the successful people that I know what they've achieved, it's always been, you know, some inspiration, some, some motivation, awareness of the opportunity, but then behind that, there's really dirty, unglamorous work, right? And that's a necessity as well. So if you think you're just gonna like sit back and manifest, you got another thing coming. And I've seen this, um, not to be sexist, um, cause I don't date guys, so this is why it's not sexist, but from girls that I've dated in the past, I've seen this so many times um, that they, they've like read the secret and it changed their life and now they're like, they, they manifested one thing, i.e. they focused on something and it happened and now they think they can manifest these massive, incredible things in their life and they sit around thinking about them and thinking it will just come to them. And especially for hot girls, that can be really dangerous because to a certain extent, because they can attract you know guys into their life that may have these things, they'll, they'll actually get away with it for a while. But um, it's a faulty belief. It's a belief that's not gonna work without action. Again, the universe responds to your actions much more strongly than to your thoughts, if indeed it even responds to your thoughts at all, okay? Um, and when it is responding to your thoughts, arguably it's because of the change in your tone of voice, changing your eye contact, changing your expressions, all the other like subtle actions that are coming out of your thoughts. One level deeper where I do think this is a dangerous thought isn't even in terms of achieving this goal, that goal, or the other goal, but it's in terms of how you view the world in general, okay? <clears throat> Which is, it's, there's some power to delusional thoughts sometimes. For example, when I go and talk to a girl, a lot of times I'll convince myself in that moment that I am the fucking shit. Like even more than I, I clearly already am, right? But I'll, I'll kind of like put it on steroids and be like, I am the man, I am the best decision she could ever make, those kind of things, which you know, I'm a pretty damn good decision, but it may not be the absolute best. And that delusional confidence can be helpful for me in that moment. But the problem with delusional confidence or a delusional view in general is it isn't based on facts. And if you start getting caught up in your own lie, if you start getting sort of like believing your own fiction, you're building essentially a castle built on clouds. It's not built on any kind of solid foundation and it will crack. It will crack, it will fall. And because your model of the world is faulty, um, there are limits to that model. 
and if you believe it absolutely, when you get outside that, those limits, you're going to be lost, confused. You're going to make a lot of very, very bad, unsubstantiated decisions. And this is what you see with a lot of, uh, there are guys I call like thick frame naturals. You see it a lot with women where like within a certain area of competence or within a certain like range of experience, they're very confident, very together. But then as soon as they're outside of that or as soon as it's undermined, as soon as their model of the world is wrong because it's a faulty model, they completely collapse. Um, they, they come apart emotionally. They, they take a lot of self-destructive behaviors, ruin their life, that kind of stuff. And it's because their model of the world has been violated and that's, that's a very, um, very difficult, very traumatic kind of a thing, okay? So the idea is this. Um, anything, if you wanna build long-term, you have to build on something factual. If you build on fantasy, you build on fiction, sooner or later you're gonna reach the end of that model. You're gonna reach the limit of the usefulness of that model. And the issue here is that then you're capped. You can no longer go further. Whereas if you had a model that was built on reality, you can continue building and building and building on that solid foundation forever and ever. All right, so it's very, very important. Essentially, don't lie to yourself, okay? You can tell yourself what you need to hear to get a particular result, but even as you're doing it, you need to understand that it's a useful fiction. If you completely buy into your own, uh, into your own lie, you lose touch with logic, you lose touch with fact, and eventually your model will become limited and you will be stuck at a certain level and unable to ever attain a higher level.